sort of feel like the King of England. It's, uh, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Uh, and I want to thank everybody for being here today. And we have the folks watching online as well. So we'll be uh, live streaming uh, live as this uh, goes on through this afternoon. We're glad you're here today to celebrate a very special friend to all of us who will always be a deep and abiding part of this special place that we call it UCF. My name is Rick Walsh. I'm a graduate and a 51-year volunteer, uh, much to the shock and amazement of some of my professors. There's a couple of them are here. First, I'd like to uh, recognize the John Hitt family support team in attendance and thank them for making the trip literally from all over the country. Martha, whom we all know as John's secret weapon, is here. Uh, Sharon, Charles, Julie, Jared, Amanda, great-grandson Luca, Alex, and Joanna. We're so glad you're here to be with us today. Let's give them a round of applause. Today. John was a special uh, friend to me. During my 10-year service on the Board of Trustees, we often talked about UCF, the role we played, the responsibilities and obligations of that, our mission, the first-generation family support since we were both first-gen folks, and then, of course, all of our sports teams. <laughs> John was the biggest supporter of athletics uh, on, the, on, the, on the grounds. We had uh, disagreements, but we enjoyed the discussions and time spent and always found a way to be aligned and supportive, and we never doubted for a minute that we were on the same team. We would always work to do our best because, as everyone in this room today knows, Anything was possible, and UCF was a labor of love. For me, working with John over so many years was a privilege personal, personally and pro professionally. He called on us to be better and to do better and to make sure what we did was not reserved for the few, but was accessible for all of us. John had such an impact and positive impact on so many, and it's most appropriate that we honor him today and celebrate his legacy, impact, and accomplishments. In doing so, however, he would be the first to say he would not accomplish all that he did without surrounding himself with great people and a great team. So let's, we're gonna try something new for a great team. I'm gonna ask certain categories to stand up. So, and then when you stand, if you can, uh, stay standing until we're done. So, any current and former board members for the foundation, alumni, athletics, or trustees, please stand. Oh, come on, I know you're here. So, so. Roger, do you need help getting up? No, no, okay. <laughs> Legislators in government and, and governors, anybody there? There it is. Thank you. UCF donors. Now we ought to see a few people get up. Current and former president's cabinet members. Current and former dean's faculty and staff. UCF athletics and coaching staff, players and personnel, and last but not least, the former, or, former order of Pegasus recipients, president's leadership, council members, and student government representatives. Okay, as you look across the room, Martha, that's what a legacy looks like. Thank you. I think he would have loved every minute of that. To all of you, our attendance at this service is indicative of the partnerships that he built over the years and the respect so many have for him and his accomplishments. He was so very grateful for the service and support all of you provided and continue to provide in our favorite alma mater and hometown team. Another way to respect and honor his work in here is surrounded by oh so many flowers. <laughs> I thought I was at the wrong place there for a minute. Um, that that, uh, that he were given us by don donors that are from a posse crew that ha hasn't been identified, but just know that they're there. They, uh, they have uh, done this to, to make sure that the, that the presidential portrait is appropriately hung. And so what you're gonna th thanks to them, uh, it's gonna permanently hang in the new entrance to the John C. Hitt Library. And what better way to recognize the best of John by letting him watch over the library, which he thought was the very heart of a university. Let's thank the donors for that. Now we have some very special folks that are going to spend a few minutes talking about our good friend John Hitt. And first up will be Alex Mortens. Thank you, Rick. Martha, Hitt family, distinguished guests, 
My name is Alex Martins. I'm the current board chair of the university's board of trustees. And I'm honored to be here to reflect upon and celebrate the legacy of John Hitt. As Rick said, John was a great friend. And I personally will always be eternally grateful to him um, for allowing me to be a student here and ultimately asking me to serve on the university's board of trustees. John's impact at UCF and across our community and state was enormous. We celebrate the incredible engine that he helped to build that enables so many students, individuals, and organizations to unleash their potential today. Dr. Hitt was often known to quote computer scientist and inventor Alan Kay, who said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. And that's what Dr. Hitt did for UCF and for Central Florida. In his inaugural address in 1992, Dr. Hitt laid out five well-known goals for our university. First, to offer the best undergraduate education available in the state of Florida to achieve international prominence in key programs of graduate study and research, to provide an international focus to our curricula and research programs, to be more inclusive and diverse, and to be America's leading partnership university. These five goals have evolved over time, but UCF's vision and priorities around academic, operational, and inclusive excellence continue to guide us today. Dr. Hitt continued on to say that he was convinced that if UCF achieves these goals, it will be America's leading metropolitan university. And even more importantly, we will be a vital force in Central Florida's development as the nation's most dynamic, vibrant regional economy. Today, UCF continues to rise in recognition for academic quality each year we move up in the rankings, and we all know that we can climb much higher before we reach our peak. Today, UCF has world-recognized programs from optics and photonics to hospitality management, management and much, much more that all invite thousands of students and faculty from around the world to learn and work here. Today, UCF's student demographics reflect the population of our community, and we are a proud Hispanic serving institution that has been recognized with the pre prestigious seal of excellencia. And today, UCF is America's partnership university, in part because Dr. Hitt had it trademarked in 2013. He was a visionary, wasn't he? UCF is an unde undeniable force for upward mobility and economic vitality in Florida growing together in partnership with our Central Florida community. His drive to align UCF's teaching, research, and service with the needs of the local economy provided a blueprint for future success and results. Today, our region moves to lead the nation and the world in a variety of technological verticals, such as health and wellness, gaming, tourism, planetary sciences, transportation, and much, much more. One final piece of Dr. Hitt's inaugural address is also very relevant today. He said, and I quote, society invests in universities, not just its money, but something far more precious, the potential of enterprising men and women who seek to enrich their lives through higher education. He knew 30 years ago that our role as a university was to unleash potential. Today and every day, UCF works to unleash that potential of people and ideas to positively impact the world. John was an extraordinary and visionary leader who was so proud of his beloved UCF. His legacy is one of devotion. Diver devotion first and foremost to our students who choose to unleash their potential with us, with us. Devotion to our faculty and staff who share the university's vision to help our students and community reach for the stars. 
and devotion to our entire Central Florida community, whom he served through meaningful partnerships so we could rise in excellence together. He provided the framework for UCF as a major metropolitan university of global impact. In that way and others, he left a great gift to all of us at UCF, as well as our region and our state that will keep giving for many, many years to come. For this and much more, all of us at UCF will be forever grateful to John Hitt. Martha, Hitt family, thank you for sharing John with us. Wow, I gotta follow that. <laughs> thank you very much, Alex. Uh, you, you set the tone and I, I guess I was wondering why I was asked to speak, and I guess it's because I was here when the, this whole area was grass and sand and that sort of thing, and been involved with the university ever since. I was also here uh, when we brought Disney here. Uh, both have been a big impact, but I will tell you the truth, the quality of impact is unequal. But that's not what I got, got to say. I wanted to, I wanted to tell you that uh, I've, Sandra and I have been so pleased and fortunate to have had John and Martha as friends. As many of you have, we are all blessed. And to have the quality of leadership that we have had here at the University of Central Florida these 20, uh, 26 years, it's been uh, really incredible. John was an honorable man. He, he was insightful. He was uh, a, a leader of great significance. Um, he brought uh, leadership uh, over 26 years. His leadership was innovative, inclusive, and incredibly impactful. He had, he had a way about him to uh, get things done. Uh, they called him, and he called himself the partnership president. And the reason for that was of so many partnerships have produced so many wonderful things in our community. Uh, the downtown campus being one. Uh, the medical school that was a precursor for Medical City, I call it Miracle City, which was a, a tough deal to, to get done, but John, through several partnerships, made it happen. Uh, the Rosen School of Hospitality Management, first in the nation. Um, he's done so many things. That he works so, so solidly with the Orlando Economic Partnership to provide all the facilities of the university to those who w were thinking about coming here, and particularly to, to demonstrate that we can turn out the, the quality of graduates that they would need for their businesses. Uh, of all the partnerships, the one that I'm particularly interested in was 75 years ago, Chancellor, University Chancellor E.T. York established a commission for the future of Florida's public universities. He asked me to serve on it with others. And uh, we had several, a number of challenges, but the biggest challenge was we had a, a very fast growing population and we had limited uh, resources and the two things that we had to, to look at was access and excellence and were we to sacrifice one for the other or emphasize one for the other and uh, that that's a tough tough one it wasn't that tough we said you can't sacrifice access or can't sacrifice excellence for the other we didn't say how you solve it though Fifteen years later, John Hitt solved that problem. He cut the Gordian knot with his two-by-two two direct to UCF program. I think that's one of the most wonderful, innovative things that could have happened anywhere in education, where the state colleges 
uh, the, the, the students of state colleges uh, upon their uh, receiving their associate degree had a guaranteed admission to the University of Central Florida and the opportunity for a full four-year uh, degree. Um, that, uh, it set off a, a, an unbelievable thing. Uh, it, it, it rocketed uh, UCF to become the second largest university in the, in the, in the country. Now that's not a uh, that's not something that uh, is so great. Except uh, he accomplished access, and he accomplished excellence. We we raised our our academic standards, our academic grade. We we, we, we during John Hitt's uh, administration, uh, two hundred two hundred sixty thousand students were received a degree. Uh, and uh, that, that wouldn't have happened at any other university. So I, I feel like uh, he saw something that nobody could for 15 years, and he's the only one so far that I know of, uh, although I think he set the standard nationally. I think others are doing it now. But uh, he and Martha have, met, have been a team that we are so grateful that they've been here uh, and, and the accomplishments that uh, that they brought to our community. So, Martha, you and Charles and your family, uh, you've got to be real proud of, of, of John Hitt. He was a wonderful, wonderful person. He was a wonderful leader, and he got us where we, where we are now, which is uh, really wonderful. We're, of course, he loved football, and, <laughs> and you, you know how that worked out. We now have a winning team, and uh, uh, based on his work, uh, we've gotten to the point where now our current administration, we're going into uh, the Big 12 Conference. So, go Knights. Charge on. together. Of course, they all stole all my information, but uh, I'm so glad to see you guys, and thank you. I'm very honored. That you asked me to say a few words about my friend. As they say in life, timing is everything. And John had the good fortune to be the president, oh, I'm sorry, of UCF at a time when our efforts were enabled and stimulated and supported by the Board of Trustees structure that then Governor Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush created. John was a man of great ideas. He came to be known as the partnership president because it was a partnership university. The tremendous growth in UCF enrollment and the huge successes of the partnerships engineered by John's leadership, <clears throat> whether cultivating the arts, building the medical school, modeling and simulation, space, the two plus two program, not the least of all, taking a sports program and the facilities <clears throat> from zero to the power five. The list of accomplishments is long. John had the kind of grace and disposition, disposition that made it all look easy. He had a keen sense of humor. He was a consummate doer. No challenge was beyond his willingness to take it on. And he instilled that same great confidence for everyone working collectively for the advancement at UCF. John was also an extraordinarily inclusive president. Where else would you find a man running a major company or university <clears throat> who would be open to past presidents of being included in everything at UCF. But that's what, who John was, and that's what he did. John was em emblematic, 
emblematic of what it is to really be a great leader. All of this is kind of about business and the public facing John Hitt, and not to minimize those great qualities. But I don't want to get. personal and talk about David's and my friendship with John and Martha. It's true that we had a <clears throat> common bond in our UCF related pursuits. Football, basketball, basketball, baseball, volleyball, anything with the ball. <laughs> but when I found out John was also a dog person, that was when we really bonded. Over the years, David and I had many dinners <laughs> with John and Martha, often at Bosphorus. And after we exhausted the conversation about athlete, athletics, we talked about dogs, which is also one of my favorite topics of conversation. And John always wanted a dog. He kept talking about wanting a dog. And he said, that's impossible in, in my mind. The job I have, I have a house where people come and business. I can't risk a dog jumping and barking. I said, I have the perfect solution. And I called my friend Trish Walsh. She and I both schemed to get John the perfect dog. And we introduced John and Martha to canine companions. And they got their beloved dog, Kessa. <laughs> Who, who remained with him for 14 years. Another successful partnership between UCF students and canine companions. To this day, there are close to, nine, I believe, 19 dogs in training, living on campus in the dorms with student puppy raisers, teaching so much to so many about what these magnificent, magnificent dogs can do. Through our shared love of dogs, I witnessed the heart of a man, and in turn, so has the UCF community. John was solely responsible for this program happening at UCF. I'd like to close by expressing my gratitude to John for his friendship and the many gifts he gave me. For one, he once asked me to make a commencement speech. Can you imagine what how good it was? <laughs> I didn't think it was a gift at the time because the thought of public speaking is terrifying, but somehow I got through it. And so today, thanks to John, I have the courage to stand here and speak publicly about my dear friend. He set a great example for all of us, and I have only the deepest appreciation for what he and Martha accomplished for UCF and the Orlando community. His enduring legacy is a great example for all of us. So, John, I say thanks for everything. Charge on. Well, you've read about and heard about and experienced the tremendous growth and things that have been accomplished at the University of Central Florida under John Hitt's 26 years. These include the development of the campus infrastructure, classrooms, research buildings, the president's house, the stadium, student union, and many, other, many others, the tripling of the university's enrollment, the pursuit of a medical school, increasing research grants, the foundation campaign, capital campaigns, and partnerships with state and federal agencies, businesses, and other universities. These are the many other metrics that uh, define a truly great university. Those of you who worked with him, Beth, Helen, Bill Merck, Bob, Mary, and others, many others, will attest that John's pursuit of excellence applied to most everything he touched. Whether it was furthering the honors, honors program, nudging the football team to Division I-A status, his attempts at golfing prowess, Establishing a downtown campus, securing elusive state funding for UCF's increasing student enrollment, or flats fishing in Florida's coastal waters, John Hitt went at it full speed ahead. Allow me to share with you a few of the behind-the-scenes events and how John came to us. 
1991, Governor Lawton Childs asked me to serve on the Board of Regents, then the governing body of Florida's state university system. The governor told his new board members that his priority for us was ensuring that the citizens of our great state were receiving what he termed the best bang for our buck on the dollars invested in our state university system. At the time, UCF's presidential, vacancy, UCF's presidential vacancy was being filled on an interim basis by Bob Bryan, a very capable senior administrator at the University of Florida who had served as interim president in our other state universities from time to time. In the search process, the chancellor's office had narrowed the field of candidates to three persons, a lady who was the provost at San Jose State University in California, the sitting president of the University of New Orleans, and the interim president of the University of Maine. During the interview process, John's responses and his ideas about the University of Central Florida and what it could become struck a resonant chord with the board. John's vision to offer the best undergraduate education possible in Florida fits squarely with the governor's charge to us about maximizing the state's return on investment. It has been my observation over the years that John was a team player, a trait he no doubt acquired from his time playing football at Austin College in Texas. Whether it was his dealings with the other nine university presidents, his efforts with Dan Holsenbeck to secure adequate funding for, from the legislature for UCS priorities, his uh, partnerships with Sandy Shugart and the other then community colleges, now state college presidents, to ensure uh, admission of their students to Florida, to the University of Central Florida. John stri strived to ensure that everyone could claim fair and beneficial treatment in his dealings with them. And John embraced technology in a big way. <clears throat> Joel Hartman, the university's vice, pres vice provost for information technology, managed to always keep John supplied with the latest electronic devices, <laughs> much to the envy of the other university presidents, I might add. As an aside, soon after he was named president, John invited me to accompany him for a fishing trip to Maine. It was the opening day of smallmouth season in Maine, and John took his fishing very seriously. Now, I must confess about being a bit skittish going to Maine so soon after we had appointed John as president. After all, we had just hired the University of Maine's president, Dale Lick, to be FSU's new president. No sooner had John been named interim president at the University of Maine than Florida's university system managed to convince he and Martha to move south to the Sunshine State. I was afraid it might be open season in Maine on anybody affiliated with Florida's university system. <laughs> And I was hopeful that no one would notice that John and I were in town. It turned out to be a great and uneventful trip. For many reasons, we will always be indebted to John and to Martha for the vision and leadership they provided to the University of Central Florida and to our community. The results of John's long service as UCS president and his leadership will forever remain a tribute to him. Thank you. I'm Beth Barnes. I was a charter member of the UCF English Department, and for many years I was John Hitt's chief of staff. The pictures of him, which appeared in the newspaper and on the web since his recent death, showed his formal side, his presidential demeanor. The accompanying articles talked about his dignity, his integrity, his importance in the community, his national leadership among educators, all so very admirable and extraordinary. But my favorite photo of him is not the one that appeared in the newspaper. It's a picture of him standing beside Nitro. He's wearing a golf shirt, smiling broadly at the camera, probably about football. It's of a John Hitt rarely seen by the public, a man I came to know well in my 14 years as Vice President and Chief of Staff and eight more years as a consultant to the President's Office. This John Hitt was my dear friend, and he was so delightfully human. I want to tell you about him. 
He deeply loved Martha Hitt and his family. He was a fool about Luca, his great grandbaby. An old college tackle, you've heard how much he loved football. He loved to play golf, and he would say that he was very good at it. <laughs> he was a whiz at freestyle solitaire. He loved coconut cake. Well, he loved any cake. <laughs> he loved to make corny puns, and he was quick to come up with them. Sometimes he just couldn't help himself. He loved practical jokes. It was customary, for example, that if a mobile phone rang during a board of trustees meeting, the owner would have to pay $10 to the UCF Foundation. The mischief in John once called me during a board of trustees meeting, and as I shelled out my $10, he called me again. That cost me $20 and it made his day. <laughs> he loved music, especially Santana and the Eagles. He enjoyed his iPhone, often during a meeting, but never think for one minute that he missed anything that was going on. He had some favorite and very wise sayings. Pigs get fed, hogs get slaughtered. Don't let something be your job not to do. And the wisest one of all, never pass up an opportunity to go to the restroom. <laughs> he could be ornery, very ornery. If I said up, he said down. If I said let's take the 417, he, he took the 408. If I said something was X, he usually said it was why. Also, he had a temper that people rarely saw. And unfortunately, I provoked it more than once. <laughs> he was a great reader of crime and spy novels. He loved his dogs, Kessa and London, and would be heartbroken to know that we just lost Kessa. He was generous, except with his snacks. His generosity would often flow from his own pocket to handle emergencies for needy students. He was endearingly a real mush pot. In the hundreds of speeches I wrote for him over the years, I had to leave anything that was emotional to the very end because invariably he would tear up. And he passionately loved UCF. He once told me that the minute he stepped foot on this campus, he and Martha knew they were home. We talked frequently on the phone after he retired and he and Martha moved to Wisconsin. I'm so grateful for my two-day visit with them this past fall. John was in full and fine form, and we laughed and laughed as we reminisced about our deep friendship our 22-year working relationship, and the 26 extraordinary years he spent as president. I miss him terribly. But when I walk on campus, I see him in our diverse student body. I marvel at our beautiful university, so much of which he built. I hear his voice and I witness his commitment to our programs. And I'm comforted in knowing that his imprint is forever embedded in UCF's DNA. I'm Mary Beth has and I served as Vice President of Division of Student Development and Enrollment Services here at UCF. I came in 1994, two years after John and Martha came to university. I am a proud first-generation college student, just as he was, his colleague, his friend, and a dedicated member of the HIT Squad. 
From the beginning, it was always about students investing in their success. As a first-generation college student, John wanted as many individuals as possible to benefit from the transformation that higher education can provide, just as he benefited. He felt strongly that any qualified individuals willing to work hard and commit their time and energy could be successful. And he knew that if they came, then we at UCF had an obligation to support them in their journey all the way to graduation and beyond. Today we celebrate John's leadership, creativity, courage, and entrepreneurial spirit that was evident across the university community and significantly impacted students' lives. Although there are many examples, I chose three to highlight today. First, he hated when anyone said, UCF is a commuter campus. He did not like to hear this as a description of UCF, and he worked creatively to change this perception. Student housing created student life on campus and made it easier for students to not be distracted by other interesting activities. At the time of his arrival, there were less than 1,500 housing beds at UCF. At the time of his retirement, there were over 12,000 beds, either university-owned, university-managed, or university-affiliated. We found creative ways to do things. Second, reach for the stars was not a tagline, but a philosophy and a plan of action that John Hitt followed and exemplified for our students, faculty, and staff. In speaking at the annual fall nighting of new students, John challenged that each student had the oppor opportunity to write the next chapter of our bold, young university. Borrowing a line from singer Katy Perry, he let them know that he expected to hear them roar, which they immediately did. Some examples of that roaring spirit our Knights Helping Knights Pantry. The idea came from a student need expressed directly by a PLC member to John and Martha during an event at their home. The idea became a reality because the students and their faculty in a lead scholars course set the plans in motion and made it happen. Knights Helping Knights Pantry continues to be a valuable student-led resource today. Study Union was created in 2008 by turning this student union, the heart of campus, into a 24-hour study and wellness place during finals weeks. The idea came from a student who found the right partners, SARC, SGA, OSI, and the Parent and Family Fund, and reached for the stars. The spring 2023 student union with extended hours ended on April 27th. Third, times of crisis and challenge. Students and the campus community witnessed a caring, empathic, concerned, and strong president standing together with them against violence, hate, injustice, terror, and tragedy too many times during John's presidency. What comes to mind first is June 12, 2016, when 49 individuals lost their lives at the, the Pulse nightclub shooting in downtown Orlando, Orlando, and this included two members of our UCF family. One and Christopher, who are just depicted in the mural on the side of the students, were those that we lost, start side of the student union. President Hitt presided that week at a memorial event in the student union for all of the Orlando community. Actually, there was a storm that was pending because we wanted to have this event on Memory Mall. And we all waited and waited, and in the best place, we came into the student union, crowded all of us together, 
and everyone from the community. John had asserted again, as he had previously had done, UCF stands with our LGBTQ plus students, faculty, staff, and alumni. I am proud that UCF is a place where love, respect, and inclusion guide all that we do. Later that same summer, a Black Lives Matter visual was also held in the student union. I think this room. President Hitt emphatically stated, let's all say strongly, firmly, without reservation, Black Lives Matter. I don't ever want any of us to forget that John Hitt led us all during these sad and painful times. This is an important part of his le legacy. My reflections today are inadequate to describe the impact that President, Emerita John C., President Emeritus John C. Hitt had on our students and our campus community. He wanted the best for our students. He cared about our students. He stood up for our students. He knew higher education could transform lives just as it did his life. John, thank you for transforming our lives and per personally giving me the opportunity to serve with you in reaching for the stars. Thank you. My name is Richard Lapchick, and I can't tell you what an honor it is for me to be asked by the Hitt family to speak here this morning. I got to know John as a friend after we established a regional office of something called the National Consortium for Academics and Sport on UCF's campus in 1992. John immediately became a supporter of our work. Um, eight years later, he took me to lunch to discuss UCF giving me an honorary degree. I was obviously very flattered by that possibility um, and moved by John, although I was still working for Northeastern University in Boston while living here. A week later, I got a message from John and Don and Tom Keon, the Dean of the College of Business, that they'd like to me to help them plan the DeVos Sport Business Management Graduate Program that Rich DeVos had made a very generous donation to help establish on our campus. I said to them that if you make diversity, community, inclusion, and ethics and leadership the pillars of that, you'll have something unique after having looked at the other 67 programs. And I also said only 6% of the students in those programs are students of color, 20% are women. We've got to recruit more women and people of color. And when I said that, they asked me if I would be interested in taking over as the head of that department, which I did in 2001. It was the best professional decision of my life. Some of you know that we publish graduation rate studies of the bowl bound teams, as well as the teams going to the men's and women's tournaments. So in 2001, when I came here, I knew UCF's graduation rates weren't good. And I was glad that they weren't going to be going to a bowl game or a tournament, so I didn't have to include it in the report. <laughs> but there it was, 2005, we're going to a bowl game. We do the report. UCF is worse than graduation rates, next to worse than academic progress rates. I come on campus that day. That's the headline on the front page of the Sentinel. People are writing me and emailing me from, and calling me from all over campus. You're paid by UCF. How could you do this? I had a meeting with John Hitt that afternoon at 4 o'clock. I was going to ask him to be the chair of our fundraising gala that year, and he agreed to do it. Then we talked about his vision for UCF, as we always did. We talked about his love of his amazing family. I expressed the same about mine. He never mentioned this, the Sentinel report. As I'm leaving, he grasped my hand, and he said, thank you for holding our feet to the fire. We're going to be better as a result. So this year, I went to the men's final college basketball game, and at the halftime, they honored the student athletes who had achieved uh, certain levels academically. This is what John Hitt set in motion. 30 straight semesters above a 3.0 for the entire athletic department, a 3.4 average this year, third highest in student history, 48 student athletes with a 4.0 GPA, 255 student athletes either on the dean's list or the athletic director's list, 70% had a better than a 3.0. The announcer asked everybody who was had being honored that night to come on the court. It literally filled the entire court with student athletes from UCF. 
And I looked up into the rafters and I said, thank you, John. You delivered on what you promised all those years ago. We have one of the best athletic programs in the country for graduation rates, as well as who we hire, men and, I mean, women and people of color in the highest percentage of any Division I program in the country. Another reason I'm very proud that I worked uh, for John Hitt and under the current leadership as well, which has carried it on. I spoke at a Leadership Florida session in 2002. The way those sessions work is there's a series of speakers, and then there's some questions and answers where everybody has an hour. And if there are more questions, you go out into the corridor and talk to whoever it is that wants to ask. And about a dozen people came out there. I noticed that one person was standing over in, in the side and it was crying and was obviously going to wait till everybody else went back inside, which he did. And he came up to me and he said, in 1994, I was a student at UCF. I was openly gay and I was being harassed and bullied and committing, commit, thought of committing suicide. John Hitt heard about that and held a rally in front of the fountain in front of the administration building, proclaiming that everyone is welcome at UCF. Everyone is welcome at UCF. This man turned to me and he said, John Hitt saved my life. And I think he meant that literally. John made people feel welcome. John knew that I was friends with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And he asked me if I could get Kareem to come and accept an honorary degree here and be a commencement speaker. He did that and the night before, John and Martha hosted them and some close friends over at their house. And I just saw Kareem a couple of weeks ago and I told him that John had passed. And Kareem, if you don't know, is very introverted, doesn't like to be in public very, as much as he's in public. Uh, and he said, I felt at home with John and Martha. They made everybody feel welcome over the years. Didn't matter what your status was, whether you're a great basketball player or you were on the maintenance crew at UCF or a faculty member. Uh, and as, as his UCF successes mounted, and they mounted brilliantly over the years, I never heard anybody mention those successes without him saying, but I had a great team that helped me. He never took the credit by himself. I think I actually found my hit squad button that we were wearing at the time of retirement and wore it here, and I was glad to see they were being redistributed again today. Uh, his principles never wavered. He stood up against hate. He stood up in support, support of the community. Uh, he stood up for what it was right, even if it was unpopular. Like many others, when D Donald Trump announced his immigration policy, I told my wife that I was going to commit an act of civil disobedience and get arrested. And I went to John Hitt and told him the same thing. I said, John, if you want me to resign, I do not want to embarrass the university. He said, Rich, that's why we hired you. That was John Hitt. Uh, it's why I think of him like I think of a smooth stone. I'm sure most people in here at some point in their life when they were growing up found themselves in front of a lake or a pond with, with a smooth stone and began to try to skip it across the water as much as you could. And if you're successful, it'll skip three or four times, make separate concentric circles, but in the end, all those circles come together. It's why I think of John Hitt as this smooth stone because of all the people he brought together. We're all here because of him, you know, if you look around this room and see how many different groups are here, we obviously have men and women, people of color and white people. We have Catholics, Buddhists, Sikh, Jew, Hindu, and Muslim. We have people with disabilities. We have people who are gay or straight. We have people who are born in comfort and people who had to struggle all their lives to achieve whatever they had to achieve. We had people who moved to America at some point, their family did, and they're now settled in America. We have people who are coming here just to study at UCF because of what it has to offer. But we're all here today because of John and Martha Hitt, his amazing wife. Son Charles and daughter Sharon, thank you for sharing your parents for all these years with, with this community and, and the whole Central Florida community. Uh, your parents were remarkable. They were so proud of you and their grandchildren and their great-grandson and apparently great-granddaughter on the way. Uh, the world is a better place because John Hitt walked on its sur surface. I love you, John Hitt. We love you, John Hitt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Well, thanks to all of you for remembering uh, John and his family. But wait, there's more. Uh, I want to uh, have some special presentations brought up. So I would first, uh, first ask Kathy DeVault, Director of Strategic Mar Partnerships for the City of Orlando, representing Mayor Buddy Dyer. Kathy. Thank you. 
Good afternoon. On behalf of Mayor Buddy Dyer and our Orlando City Council, who could not be here today because we have a City Council meeting at this very exact time, I am honored to present a resolution acknowledging UCF President Emeritus John C. Hitz, countless accolades for his commitment to educational success and the power of partnerships. To be brief, I will not read the resolution word for word. I will not read each whereas clause. My colleague and good friend Roseanne Harrington from Mayor Deming's office will do that. But I did want to share that today, Mayor Dyer, on behalf of the residents of our community, extends his deepest sympathy to the family and friends of Dr. John C. Hitt and declares Monday, May 15th, 2023, as a citywide day of mourning and a celebration of his life. Further, we present this resolution to his family and loved ones as a testimonial of the high esteem, love, and appreciation that our community will always have for Dr. John C. Hitt. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Now I'd like Roseanne Harrington, Chief of Staff for the Office of Orange County Mayor Jerry Demings. Roseanne, there it goes. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, Mayor Demings apologizes for not being here, but he's out of town on business. But he did want me to express his condolences to the Hitt family and to also express his gratitude to Martha Hitt for all of her years of service to our community. Your contributions have made this a better place for, for all of us. Thank you. Um, and now I'm going to read the proclamation. And it's long, but Dr. Hitt did a lot, and we think he is deserving of this proclamation. So I'm going to read everything. Whereas uh, Dr. John C. Hitt received his undergraduate degree with honors in psychology from Austin College, located in Sherman, Texas, completed postgraduate studies in psychology, and earned both a Master's of Science and Doctor of Philosophy degree from Tulane University, and whereas John C. Hitt served in diverse academic, administrative, and executive roles at Tulane University, Texas Christian University, Bradley University, and the University of Maine before assuming the presidency at University of Central Florida. Whereas from March 1st, 1992 through June 30th, 2018, Dr. Hitt served as UCF's fourth president a 26-year tenure that ranks him as the third longest serving president in the university system of Florida, as well as a record awarding degrees than any other president in SAUS history. Whereas Dr. John Hitt plan for leading the University of Central Florida was based on five key principles, which include to offer the best undergraduate education available in Florida, to achieve international prominence in key programs of graduate study and research, to provide an international focus to curricula and research programs, to become more inclusive and diverse, and to become America's leading partnership university. Whereas the remarkable collaborations forged by Dr. Hitt led to the creation of UCF's College of Medicine the UCF downtown campus, the FBC Mortgage Stadium, the Addition Financial Arena, the Rosen College of Hospitality, the Florida High Tech Corridor, and the Central Florida Research Park, a longtime collaboration for economic advancement between UCF and Orange County government. Whereas Dr. Hitt received multiple accolades and distinctions for his impactful leadership, including the John Young History Maker Award from the Historical Society of Central Florida, Central Floridian of the Year by Orlando Sentinel, Orlando Magazine's ranking of 50 Most Powerful People, and Washington Monthly's America's 10 Most Innovative College Presidents, among many others. And whereas Dr. Hitt passed away on May, on February 20th, 2023, at the age of 82, and is survived by his cherished wife, Martha Hitt, their children, grandchildren, and grandson, whereas it is the desire of the Orange County Board of County Commissioners to extend its sincere sympathy to the family of Dr. Hitt during this time of sorrow. Now, therefore, be it resolved by Orange County Board of County Commissioners that this memorial resolution recognizes and honors 
Dr. John C. Hitt for his exceptional leadership as president of the University of Central Florida. And whereas that this resolution be presented to the family of Dr. John C. Hitt as testimonial of the esteem in which he was held by Orange County Board of County Commissioners, the residents of Orange County, and the entire UCF community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roseanne. Finally, representing the UCF student body, Nicholas Foster with student government. Good afternoon, everyone. First and foremost, I'd like to thank everyone in attendance today, whether that be virtual or in person. Your presence is appreciated, thank you. My name is Nicholas Foster. I'm a two-time alumni, most recently graduating with a master's in communication. During my time as a student here, I proudly served as a Senate President Pro Tem Board for Student Government and as a member of the President's Leadership Council, two organizations which President Emeritus Hitt was very fond of. But enough about me. Today, we're here to honor and celebrate President Emeritus Dr. John C. Hitt. I chose to honor him on behalf of all the students here at the university due to the fact that much of what we have today may not have been possible without his leadership. I introduced a proclamation honoring President Emeritus Hitt in the Student Body Senate to show gratitude for all the work he's done. And it passed unanimously with the vote count of 28 to 0 to 0 on March 30th, 2023. I would like to read parts of this proclamation on behalf of the student body to show our appreciation and gratitude towards President Emeritus Hitt as well as his family. While president of the University of Central Florida, Dr. Hitt conferred 262,858 degrees to UCF students more than any other president in the state university system of Florida's history, second nationally among public university presidents for numbers of degrees conferred at a single school. Under Dr. Hitt's leadership, UCF's graduation and retention rate soared, as did SAT scores for incoming freshmen. Dr. Hitt oversaw tremendous growth of the university's academic programs and athletics, including the opening of College of Medicine, Rosen College of Hospitality, Burnett Honors College, FBC Mortgage Stadium, and the Addition Financial Arena. Dr. Hitt acted on numerous boards, including Orlando Economic Partnership, Florida Council of 100, and NCAA Division I Board of Directors. Dr. Hitt has also served as chair of the State University Presidents Association. Dr. Hitt was a champion of diversity, equity, and inclusion, increasing minority enrollment from 17 to 46% while in the position of president. By the end of his tenure, one in every four students at UCF were first in their family to attend college. UCF students will forever remember and appreciate the access to education, as well as the love, dedication, and effort Dr. John C. Hitt put into building the brand of the university into what it is today. And Dr. John C. Hitt will be remembered as a founding father to the University of Central Florida, and his tenure and impact at the university will forever be memorialized. Be it for, be, therefore, be it resolved that the 54th Student Senate of, that the University of Central Florida acknowledge and remember the life of John C. Hitt and be it further resolved that a copy of this proclamation be sent to Dr. John Z. Hitt's family in an effort to show the family members they are not alone in this difficult time and that the UCF community will always cherish John C. Hitt's memory and legacy. I just want to say I'm very honored to have been asked today to speak on behalf of the student body. We cherish Dr. John C. Hitt and his legacy is something that will never be forgotten. And I want to personally thank the Hitt family because I would have not have gotten this experience that I got at the University of Central Florida anywhere else. And I would like to present this proclamation as a testament to show we are very grateful for Dr. John C. Hitt's work at the university. Thank you, Nicholas. And thanks to all of you for your personal stories and for being a special part of John's celebration. Uh, one of John's many legacies is the optimism and can-do spirit that distinguishes to this day the university that he nurtured so lovingly. And as we close the celebration, let's leave you with John's words from his last public address. You started this. <laughs> 
that he made to the Florida Board of Governors and its audience. John said, as I look to the future, I know that our most daring days are ahead of us, that our students and faculty will inspire the world and that you will be there every step of the way in the way as UCF continues to turn the impossible into the inevitable. I think it's classic John Hitt. It's a challenge, his challenge to all of us and I think it's worthy of our best celebration. Thank you. I'd like to, we have a special tribute that we'd like to play now. You turn the video on, please. Thanks for making an impact on the city beautiful. Thank you for empowering a big vision. Thank you for having the courage to attempt and achieve big things. Thank you, John, for giving inclusivity a home. Thank you, John, for keeping our foundation strong. Thanks, Dr. Hitt, for always cheering us on. for putting students first. We would now like to invite everyone to attend the John C. Hitt Memorial Eucharist taking place Wednesday, May 17th at 2 p.m. at the Cathedral Church of St. Luke, downtown Orlando, and everyone here is invited. And those of you that are line streaming, you're invited as well. Let's help, help me thank a few people. Let's thank our favorite bagpiper, Reginald Lyle. Reginald is donating his time and talent because of his gratefulness for Dr. Hitt bringing bagpipes to UCF ceremonies when he came to UCF. Reginald, thank you. We also want to thank Jeff Rupert and the world-class UCF jazz professors with jazz majors who contributed their time and talent for today's celebration. We want to thank Air A. Mark for their in-kind donation of the wonderful food and beverages for our reception. And that's, that's it. It's okay. And we want a special thanks to Anna and Joe, Joe Adams for helping put all this together. Thanks for all attending, and we would invite all of you to stay for food and fellowship at the reception in the rear of the ballroom. And if I could ask everyone to remain seated just temporarily so that Reginald can lead the family and guest speakers out for the recessional. But before we leave, let's do one last hurrah. Go Knights! Go Knights! Reginald, it's all yours. Mm -hmm.